I saw my brother from afar. He was macheted on the head. The whole place was burnt down to ashes. Of at the police station, my heart was broken. This man does not deserve this. Ever since my brother died, I have not even heard anything. Even a condolence letter from the state government. It was in the evening. They now finally they broke the news to us that uh, my daddy had been killed during the NSAS protest. I'm a junior sister to the late DSP Augustine Higuchi that was murdered during the SAS protest at Ogun State Atonta. On the 21st of October 2020, I had a call. My younger brother called me and he said, Sister, do you hear? My uncle is killed. I said, Which uncle is killed? I just said, ah, Please leave me alone. Not quite long, I just opened my phone. I saw it on the social media that a DSP was murdered at Atonta, Ogun State. His name, late DSP Augustine Ubechi. I was shocked, killed. Someone they called that morning telling him that ah, there is a crisis in Lagos and he said there was nothing at Ogun State. Ogun State was peaceful. Not now calling me that he's dead. What happened? How did it happen? I was lost in thought. I, because I couldn't, I can't just figure it out. So I disguised myself. I have to put on, I dress like a man. I put on trousers, put on face cap. So on getting to the police, at, at Atonta police station, I saw my brother from afar in cold blood. He was macheted as if he was a criminal. The whole place was burnt down to ashes. Not even a pin that can be picked out of at the police station. I started crying. He couldn't be my brother because DSP Augustine Ubechi does not deserve to die in that manner. He was left alone. I was crying. It was so painful that you could die just like a common thief, a common criminal. My heart was broken. This man does not deserve this. When I heard the news, the news was so terrible. I couldn't even believe. I was at home on the 21st of October. I was at home. So that morning he called me. I was even scared. I was like, ah, Dad, hope you are OK. I hope everything is fine. He told me everything is fine. That that is okay, that is even asked of us that we should not go out, that we should try to obey the, there's curfew around, that we should obey the curfew um, being enforced by the Lagos State Government, and we should make sure we don't go out, join those people during the protest. After two hours or so, my younger brother called me that he was trying to call my dad, he wanted to tell him something, but his number was switched off. I was so restless, I was even trying to ask people questions because I was checking online, trying to know what was going on. Was, because there were many things going on in Lagos. Everywhere was so terrible. It was in the evening. They now, finally, they broke the news to us that uh, my daddy had been killed during the NSAS protest. I was so confused, I was shocked because it doesn't, it doesn't look real to me. Like everything just, it just a mirage to my eyes because it was somebody I just spoke with in the morning. How come? His voice, the morning voice was even on my ear. Like, how come? What was happening? So they have to took his corpse out by 2 a.m. at night down to the mortuary, Ogun State, Atonta. This is the man that I've worked for the whole 35 years. He's supposed to retire this February. This February. He's supposed to retire this February. But his dream was cut off on 21st of October 2020. He's a kind-hearted man, very loving, very caring, very sacrificing. He doesn't even think of himself. What comes in his mind is for his children. Always trying to know, even though he's not around, it's like he's always around us. Ever since my brother died, I have not even heard anything, even a condolence letter from the state government, which I was thinking 
maybe because he was the only officer that was killed in Ogun State. That was why nothing was being aired. Not even a letter was even addressed to the family. Since the death of my dad, it has been very, very tough. And even the barrack where we stay, the normal policy here is that whenever something like this, a police officer loses his life or he retires after some certain years or months, they have to leave the barrack. And we don't have where to stay, where to go. If we are being asked to leave the barrack today, where are we going to stay? Where are we going to go? Thank God for the police, for their assistance. He told them, we don't have anything. No. The children, they are just in school. No. They found all the barrier space, everything. They tried. But my only concern, because after barrier, what next? Is this how the life of the children will just die down? The ones in school, are we going to tell them to stop schooling? One is year three. We have the one that is in year two. How do they want to survive? I'm trying to use this opportunity to the good of Nigerians to help us. Even the Ogun State government, we are begging, sir. You are a father. I, I, I want to appeal to you as a father, please, in any way, in your strength, in your capacity to support us as your children. Please, sir, we'll be very grateful if you can meet us at our needs, sir. So I'm using this opportunity now to plead to the Ogun State governor. Governor Dakbo Abiodu, to please come in our heads, in the head of these children. If you can bless a man that only won in Big Brother, how much more an officer who have worked for the old 35 years and that was murdered just at his peak of his pension. All good Nigerians that are hearing my voice now should please come to the heads of these children. They need our love. I don't think there is any plan to push them out of the out of the barrack very soon. Because okay. the Inspector General of Police is having a very uh, special uh, consideration for all the officers that lost their lives during the, the entire uh, uh, protest. Okay. Even all those who lost their lives, they were all posthumously promoted to their next rank by okay. the Inspector General of Police. And uh, there are a lot of things that the Inspector General of Police is having in, in stock for them. So nobody is contemplating of uh, sending them out of the barracks soon. So what I believe is that the Inspector General of Police is not taking their matter so lightly. He's taking it with all seriousness. Even when the Inspector General of Police came to the state, he specifically invited the family of the, the, of the officer that lost his life. And he has one-on-one -on -one discussion with were with them and they have been even invited to abuja about two or three occasions where the, the issue of their welfare and whatever is being discussed uh, being discussed with the inspector general so i don't think there is anything any reason for them to entertain any fear it's not the only person that uh, we lost to, to the in the force they are men in across the across the state we have about uh, about six of them in Lagos, we have one in here, we have, we have one in Lopo City, we have in Rivers, we have in Loyal State. All, all of them are going to be catered for at the same time.